Greetings from the Value Village parking lot here in Medicine Hat, Alberta, where it is a hot one already today. And we are doing another quick weekend camping trip. Uh, this time we're down here for a vintage trailer rally, so that promises to be a lot of fun. And we'll probably see a few other things along the way. Let's check it out. So Emily's doing a little bit of shopping and Mabel and I are just kind of hanging out here in the truck in the meantime. Last night was a bit of a comedy of errors getting down here. We um, had to work until 6 and then go home and pick up the trailer because and the dog. And uh, of course home was about 35 minutes in the opposite direction of where we needed to be. So we had to go all the way home, hook up the trailer, pick up the dog, uh, throw some food in the fridge of the trailer, and then basically go back the direction we had just came from. Uh, so that added a whole bunch of time. And then I forgot my trusty cell phone at work, so we had to swing back past, uh, past work for me to pick up my phone. So we were super late getting on the road and uh, so I didn't film any of the drive down at all and um, yeah we didn't get camp set up until about 11:30 last night actually that's not even true we pulled into the campground about 11:30 last night finally got camp set up about midnight and went to bed about 12:30 in the morning um, got up again about 7 and got ready to face the day and of course started it off with her standard camping breakfast of bacon eggs toast and a lot of coffee but um, like i said we're down here there's a vintage trailer rally taking place at gas city campground and so i don't know uh, today is a thursday and it's kind of the unofficial start of the rally the rally's big events are going to take place over the weekend on friday night and saturday uh, and we're going to miss those because we have to work again on Saturday. So we're not sure how much of it we're going to get to see. I know even just driving around the campground this morning, there was quite a few neat little uh, trailers and whatnot to see. So um, we'll see some cool trailers. We might meet some people. Who knows? You know, introverted me like, okay, you know, meeting people, not necessarily my forte. But, uh, you know, I can come out of my comfort zone sometimes. And yeah, and like I said, we're going to see what else we can find while we're down here in Medicine Hat that's not too hot. So down here in downtown Medicine Hat at what I believe is called uh, Veterans Memorial Park, as evidenced by all the uh, war memorials and plaques. But also down here they have this really cool mural commemorating the flooding of the South Saskatchewan River on June the 9th, 1995. Quite the impressive piece of artwork. working our way over here to the other side. If I've got my directions organized, we're heading to the east side of the park to check out a couple other artifacts here. Again, with our pride in lack of prior research, Emily's gonna do a quick look up on uh, the history of uh, these locomotives here in the park. Thankfully, our friends Chris and Connie of BigDoor.com have written a little write-up about these locomotives. They are CP Rail 1418 and 1424 that have been retired and put on display here. They were both built in 1952 at the diesel plant in London, Ontario. Their model FP7s designed for passenger service, although they could be called upon to pull freights as needed. Thanks, Chris and Connie, for the great information. Who needs to do our own research when Chris and Connie have done it all for us anyway? <laughs> we do appreciate you guys, honest. We really do. Mm, 
So they were retired in 1983 and donated to Medicine Hat a few years later. Put on display in the old gray, yellow, and Tuscan red. Hmm, so that's what that color is called. Tuscan red. Definitely showing some signs of wear in the park and obviously quite the impressive sight from here on the ground standing in front of them just like uh, train cars and rolling stock that are out on the uh, active tracks these ones have suffered of at the hands of uh, graffiti artists, which I will put in quotations. The nice thing is, is that coming here is going to help me solidify the order in which I release the Ken Liddell video. You'll remember in that one I mentioned about not sure when I was going to post it, um, but actually this train, kind of giving you a hint about what's to come in that next series of videos, this train has a tie-in similar to what the Ken Liddell video has a tie-in. So I know that's very cryptic, but all will make sense as we go forward once I get around to filming what's going to be the first video in that series. So stay tuned for that. And I don't claim to know a lot about a tank or about tanks, but I do know, thanks to this plaque, that this was a Sherman tank donated to the city of Medicine Hat in Canada's centennial year. So for the non-Canadians watching, that means it has been, uh, or it was donated in 1967 and is a very fitting tribute here in the Veterans Park. And it's got a great view of the two Canadian Pacific locomotives right nearby and the War Memorial Cenotaph down at the other end of the park. All right, that's gonna wrap it up from here. We found a couple geocaches, looked at some of the artifacts, checked out the cenotaph. On to our next little medicine hat stop. Great spot right here along the river. Train bridge to our right, traffic bridge to our left. Very pretty. Medicine Hat has a very nice, uh, nice looking downtown. So we are going to be checking out Swirls, which is apparently a real big Medicine Hat tradition. Sign says established 1984. We had no idea about it until I decided to check the Calgary Foodies group on Facebook and see what they recommended for places to eat in Medicine Hat. And this place came up as the clear winner for anything ice cream related. So let's see what we get. Okay, and you know what I'm getting? I'll get a large, large cookie dough Arctic swirl, yes. All right, it's nice and cool in the shade here. There's nobody else on the patio, so the dog's not gonna disturb anyone, so. Oh, okay, this is what I definitely Nice. This is what I had heard about, is that they actually have large chunks of cookie dough 
in their cookie dough arctic swirl which is i guess the equivalent of a dairy queen blizzard Oh yeah, that's a winner. That's like genuine cookie dough. Mm. Back at the campground and just having a grand old time watching all the vintage bowlers and other fiberglass trailers roll in. Okay, well, let's do what we came here to do and go look at some campers. And I don't know if that's a 15? It's a different layout than our 17-footer. I can't tell, but there's penguins in the window, so that's a winner for me. So what is that blue thing attached to the fire hydrant? Do you have any idea? Okay, me either. Hmm. Very cool. So it's kind of funny. For our stay in the rally, we tell people we're over in the high rent district. We got the uh, last site that was open in the campground, so we're over in the 50 amp section with all the big motor homes and fifth wheels and. There's our little bowler right mixed in the middle there with all the big players. There we go. Bella is back at home and on the driveway. That worked out uh, quite well. The trip started with, uh, with a few challenges that I alluded to for getting the keys and whatnot. One that I forgot to mention was we had plugged it in a couple nights before and turned the fridge on and was trying to run it off the uh, regular household 110 volt connection and the fridge never got cold so I don't know if it's a Bella problem like with a uh, burnt out element in the fridge or if it was a problem with our extension cord. I know it was plugged into a good outlet here in the garage and that worked. So, I mean, it's most likely the element in the fridge, assuming it's never been replaced before, you know, that element's 44 years old. So uh, the good news is, well, 
The fridge was warm when we got to Medicine Hat because I turned it on to 12 volt uh, for the trip down, but 12 volt, uh, you know, running the fridge on 12 volt when it's 30 some degrees outside, that fridge was never going to get cold on 12 volts. Uh, so I didn't bother trying to run it on uh, electricity in Medicine Hat. We just ran it on propane because with the two 30 pound bottles on the front, we have a lot of propane and I didn't want to take a chance on having the food sit in a uh, warm fridge any longer than necessary. So I got to do a little bit of investigation before our next trip just to see if it was something I did wrong. Maybe it wasn't uh, the trailer wasn't sitting quite level enough on the driveway. I know those old fridges need to be pretty level before they'll work. Uh, so I'll do a little experimenting with that and see if we can get the fridge working on electricity again. Otherwise, if we have to run propane, I'm okay with that. It doesn't take a lot of propane, and we have <laughs> a lot more capacity on there than we actually need. But that was uh, kind of the start of the trip. The uh, end of the trip worked well. Ran into our first fan that's ever recognized us from YouTube. We were at a rest stop outside of Brooks uh, on the Trans-Canada Highway, and... Uh, heard hey Dano can come from behind us so that was really cool nice to meet you Newton shout out to you if you're uh, if you're still watching thank you for your support it was great to meet you and uh, fantastic hope to see more people who watch us uh, recognize us out in public and uh, and say hi I love it so fantastic great trip to Medicine Hat way shorter than we would have liked we really wish we could have spent the next couple days down there and take full advantage of the rally but it is what it is for now so that's it we'll see you in the next episode we are down here for another short camping trip this time we've come to hang on Is that recording? Yes. Yeah.